So this one is sort of an album layout example. It's a pretty standard thing to have where you each have these like cards on the screen and you have an image to the left and you have some text to the right. However, there's like a lot of like little delicate stuff that you need to, to keep in mind here. So this one is going to teach us both about how to nest grid inside of another grid, um, as well as uh, give us some practice with using uh, auto fit and, and min max. So kind of the cool thing about this is that there are no media queries in this entire thing, yet it is completely responsive, meaning that as big as it goes, you have four and then as you get smaller, it snaps down to down to three, down to two. And then eventually, once it's too small, it'll snap down to a column of one without having to write any sort of media queries, which I think is pretty neat. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started on that. I'm going to open this one up on another tab so we can reference it. Open up the starter file. And I, what I've done, let's look at some HTML that we've got here. So we have div with a class of albums. That's going to be our grid. And then each album uh, is going to have a, some artwork, which is just a random image coming off of Unsplash. Um, and then inside of that, we will have our album details, which go to the right of it. So initially, when I tried to do this one, I actually thought I could get away with uh, not having this sort of album details wrapper div and just have like the H2 as a sibling to the image. Um, and while I do find with CSS Grid, you do a, you have a lot less wrapper components, you still have to have them. In this case, it was a really good use case of when sometimes you need to, to wrap a bunch of elements in a, a wrapper div. So we have our album details of the H2, a paragraph, another paragraph. Um, which is the artist. And then uh, sometimes there's multiple descriptions and sometimes there's just one uh, description that we have here. And we want to have it vertically centered inside of this card. So regardless of where we're at. So let's kick it off here. First things we're going to do. And by the way, you should pause this and try to do it yourself before we move along. Um, but other than that, let's get rolling. So I'm going to start off with the actual grid, which is the albums. So albums, we're going to display grid and how wide should each grid template be? Well, grid template columns. Oop. We're going to repeat and we're going to use that other one like we did before. We're going to say auto fit and let's just give it a hard 100 pixels. So however many 100 pixels ones work, obviously that's not going to, to work very well. Um, so what we really need to do here is to change this to be a min max at a minimum. I want it to be 400 pixels and at a maximum, I want it to be hundred percent wide, which is one FR. And then wh what this will do is the sort of the size of the content inside of it. will figure out how many can fit on a page. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. That's, that's the basis of our grid. Now let's go down to the album and style that a little bit, just the background. I'm gonna put a RGBA on it, some box shadow. Looking good, looking good. Let's go back up to our grid here and say grid gap, I don't know, 20 PX. It's looking pretty good. Our album should have some padding of 20 PX on it. Now, how do I actually get the image and the text to go side by side? If the albums is the grid and the album is the grid item, can't, how do I use grid on the actual album itself? And it, this is very similar to Flexbox in that your grid item can also be a grid container at the exact same time. So even though album is itself a grid item, we can display grid right on it. And then we're going to make two columns. And if we look at this version here, we're going to make one column that is 150 pixels wide for the image and then the rest for the, the description. So we'll say grid template columns and we're going to have 150 pixels for the first one and then one FR for whatever's left after that. And you see that the, the values are butting up against each other. We'll have a grid gap 20 PX maybe. So it's not bumping up. Maybe we'll bump that down to 10 PX. Good. Now I want inside of this album here, I want the uh, everything to be vertically centered. So you tell me it's align items. It's going to be center and that will vertically center. They are being very big. Let's try to debug. I actually don't know why they are being so big. Let's see uh, what is then causing that uh, grid template columns. 
we'll turn on let's let's get our dev tools out we'll go to layout we'll turn on one of the album and see what we're dealing with here something is causing it to be big what could it be not that not that not that not oh you know what maybe it is the natural is that is that what it might be the natural size of the image tag 300 pixels high and how high are these things uh with 340 yep so 300 pixels high plus the 20 pixels of margin um on our 20 pixels of grid gap that's causing it so actually that's that's really interesting little bug that we ran into there um because the natural image uh height was 300 pixels um it was actually causing it to uh to be bigger than it actually should be so um how do we fix that let's take a look i'm willing to bet if we select one of our images which is album artwork so we'll give ourselves a selector here and give that a width of a hundred percent so it spans the entire width of its column does that affect there we go that fix it and that i guess that will kick it into i'm very curious to see if chrome does the exact same thing let's take a look ah there so that's a little bit more of a uh, some more info um because uh, what was happening here is that the column is only 150 pixels wide, but I had not set my images to be 100 pixels wide. So in the case of Firefox, they were automatically resizing it. And in the case of Chrome, it's spilling outside of the column. Um, and that's what's actually uh, computing the actual height of the image. So by adding a width 100%, what it will do is it actually forces the image to size itself, not based on its natural 300 pixel uh, width, but based on the the available space for it, which is 150 pixels for the container. And then that will in turn kick the height to resize itself as well because images are proportional. So a little a little good thing to know there. And I guess opening it up in another browser would have would have showed me a little bit quicker. Good. So we've got this. They are vertically centering themselves on there. I'm going to go to my album and say color white and change up the font weight 100. Beauty looking really good. Um, now, as we resize it, you should see that we have more on the screen as we have more space. And you can play around with the actual size of this one. You could go down to 300 pixels and fit them. What is really neat about using this grid template columns and fit as many in as long as they are at least 300 pixels is that this layout, this grid that we did here, currently it's bound by the uh, resizing of the browser. But if I had this album grid, maybe two grids side by side, and one of them was like 30% of the, the browser and the other one was 70% uh, of the browser, they would only show maybe one in the first column and then two in the actual second column. So I would have two grids side by side and it's almost sort of like element queries or container queries there where they will just fit as many as they can in the parent container. And in this case, the parent container is as wide as it will actually go. So hopefully you learned a thing or two there about nesting grid. Let's move into the next one, which is building an image gallery.